Hi, Redeemer Church. I'm Eric Zeller, one of your elders. And for today's Redeemer encouragement, I want to bring to you a call to happiness. That's the encouragement today. And it's an encouragement to be happy. And I know that makes me sound like one of those smiley TV preachers, perhaps. Uh, but really, the Christian life is supposed to be a happy life, a joyful life. Those are the same thing biblically. We see throughout God's word that Christians are to be a happy people. And what that means is that if our day-to-day -day experience of the Christian life is one of sadness, is one of gloom, is one of feeling downcast and discouraged, like, yes, those times will be there, but if that's our normal experience, that's indicative of a spiritual problem in our Christian life because our normal experience is not supposed to be one of gloom, it's supposed to be one of happiness. I want to show you that today from Psalm 40. Look at Psalm 40 with me and, and do open up your Bible on your phone or wherever your Bible is. I, I want you to see these words in Psalm 40. It says this, this is one of the Psalms of David. Psalm 40, verse 16. It says, May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, great is the Lord. See, it's saying that, that as we seek God, what should our experience be? It should be one of rejoicing and being glad in him. And in, in this psalm, I think as we read through the whole psalm, we, we can see some different aspects of this happiness that Christians are supposed to have. First of all, reality. Reality, because if you look at verse 1 and 2, you see that this is not some guy that's in this really good situation. He just won the lottery. The, the money's pouring in. His life is comfortable and at ease. That's not it at all, because he says things in this psalm like, verse 2, He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog. It says a little bit later in the psalm, verse 12, it says, Evils have encompassed me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head. My heart fails me. Later, verse 14, he says, They, they seek to snatch away my life. The people are delighting in my hurt. So this is a difficult life. It's a, it's a life of reality. He's living in the real world, a world broken by sin. But still there's happiness. Even amidst reality, there's happiness. How can this be? Well, a second aspect of this happiness is authority. First reality, then authority, because it says in verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. So he's waiting. He's recognizing that the situation that he's in is one that God has brought about, and the needful is for the Christian to wait, to know that God is the one who is going to act in this situation. As we go down to verse 6, he says, In sacrifice and offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. So the question is, what does God delight in? He says, Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. So the question is, what does God require? That's a question that we should be asking in life. What does God delight in? What does God require? Because God is the authority. I am not. He determines the world. He determines my situation. I don't. So what would his authority have me do? Therein lies my joy. Therein lies my delight. But a third aspect of this joy, reality, authority, then we have theology. This is a richly theological joy that the Christian can have. Because in verse 5, look what he says. He says, You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. So he's saying, I know who this God is. I know what this God has done in the past. I know how he has delivered his people. I know how he saved me. This is a theological happiness that I can have. So verse 11, he says, As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. Even in the reality of this world, I know that your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. My theology keeps me going. My theology makes me happy. But then finally, I want you to see testimony. We talked about reality, authority, theology. We can also see here testimony 
Because as I'm um, remembering what it is like to live under the authority of this good God that my theology tells me about, I want to give testimony to that. I want to tell other people about what this God has done. So it says in verse 3, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. I want other people to know this God that can bring joy even in the midst of the reality of this world. Verse 9, I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips. I'm going to tell everybody about this. Even as people are after my life, even as my, my life is hard and I'm suffering and I'm waiting for God still to deliver, I know how he already has delivered. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to say how he has delivered. I'm going to say how he has saved. I'm going to give testimony to the goodness of my God. He says, I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I'm not keeping it secret. I've spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. And so, friends, all these things come together, reality, authority, theology, and testimony, to make us a people who, even as we suffer, even as we live through COVID-19, we can sit here and we can say, may all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And Redeemer Church, as you seek the Lord today, may you rejoice and may you be glad in him.